Okay, now that we've gotten the action potential down the axon, it's going to reach the axon terminal, and we're going to have to have a way to communicate with another neuron. Or it could be a synapse can be um, with a muscle cell or um, a gland as well. We're going to be looking at it um, for neuron to neuron communication, that being a synapse. So um, synaptic transmission is what we're talking about. Communication from one neuron to another. Presynaptic neuron is the first in the sequence. Postsynaptic is the second. Um, if we had another one down here, it would be a postsynaptic neuron, and this one would be pre in the context of one neuron talking to another. Synapses are um, where there's a connection between two neurons. And there's two types of synapses. We're going to focus a lot more on one. Um, the first type I'm just going to introduce, talk about here, and, and that's it. Um, regardless, we're talking about the connection right here right, zoomed in between um, the axon terminal. Actually, let me label that for both of them. Axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron. That's what these guys are. That's going to be communicating um, with either a dendrite or cell body. In this case, looks like a dendrite to me of the postsynaptic neuron. The type of synapse on the left here is called an electrical synapse. It is going to basically be gap junctions. Um, so remember talking about gap junctions of cardiac tissue that allow for rapid movement of ions from one cell to another. These are called gap junctions. That's what's happening here. So the action potential is basically being um, passing across from one cell to the other. Here's our action potential. That's it. We're gonna be focusing on chemical synapses. Chemical synapses are more, more common um, and also more complex. Yay. So uh, let me find a different color here. Okay, we'll do some purple. Chemical synapses is when a chemical is released into the synaptic space. That's what this space is here. It's also called a synaptic cleft. Cleft means um, space. Um, chemical is released. This chemical is called the neurotransmitter. You know about neurotransmitters as a type of signaling molecule released by neurons. Here we are. Um, so um, neurotransmitters are going to be kept, stored in here, and then released and bind to a receptor on the postsynaptic neuron. We'll see the detail of this. Okay. And uh, well, let's see the detail. Start to see the detail right now. Here we go. Um, so we're zoomed into that same place here, and now this is just showing chemical synaptic transmission, so meaning neurotransmitter, using neurotransmitters. So um, this is an overview here, um, I'll then kind of go by step by step. Um, so first step is we've got an action potential come down the axon to the axon terminal. That's what's happening right here. Sodium and potassium channel, channels, voltage gated, you know, are involved in that. When that action potential reaches the axon terminal, that targets and stimulates voltage gated calcium channels. Voltage gated calcium channels are basically only located at the synaptic terminal. They're a different color here. They're, they're, they're there. Um, they, when they open, calcium flows into the cell. Calcium is high outside the cell and low mm -hmm. inside the cell. So there's a strong electrochemical gradient because it's also negative inside the cell, um, generally. There's a strong gradient for calcium to flow into the cell. 
it's due to that voltage signal. Calcium flowing in is going to trigger the synaptic vesicles to fuse with the membrane and release neurotransmitter. This is a type of exocytosis, or this is exocytosis, um, releasing a large amount of substance into the synaptic cleft. We have neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft, which is going to bind to a receptor. There's different types of receptors. Um, in this picture, this is showing a ligand-gated ion channel or a chemically-gated ion channel, but there are other types of receptors as well. Either way, that's going to cause um, a signal inside the cell. Let's walk through those steps again with this amazing animation that I made. Um, so orient yourself to presynaptic neuron with the presynaptic membrane here, the postsynaptic membrane, um, which is part of the postsynaptic neuron. And then there's vesicles filled with neurotransmitter um, in that synaptic terminal, um, the axon terminal. So when an action potential comes down the axon, it's going to trigger opening of these voltage-gated calcium channels. There's high calcium outside. So when these channels open, calcium is going to flow into the cell, and that's going to trigger these vesicles to fuse with the presynaptic membrane and release neurotransmitter into that synaptic cleft. When neurotransmitter binds to these receptors, it's going to cause a signal. In this case, I'm showing chemically gated channels that are the receptors. So when this ligand bound to them, they opened and could allow an ion to pass through. Um, so, for example, glutamate is a neurotransmitter that opens chemically gated sodium channels. So, that's these are chemically gated sodium channels in that case. And sodium would flow into the cell down its electrochemical gradient. What would be the effect of sodium on this postsynaptic cell? Is it going to cause an action potential? Well, maybe. Maybe not. This is a graded potential, which is going to cause a graded potential, also called a local potential. It's local to this dendrite or cell body. In this case, it is depolarizing. Because we're talking about sodium. This is excitatory. We're bringing the postsynaptic membrane closer to threshold. So this is an excitatory signal. But neurotransmitters binding their receptors could instead result in an inhibitory or hyperpolarizing signal. Depends on the, what neurotransmitter it is and uh, uh, primarily, there are different types of receptors as well that do matter, um, but this week we'll just look at different types of neurotransmitters. Glutamate is excitatory, depolarizes. GABA is an example of a neurotransmitter that is inhibitory because it hyperpolarizes the postsynaptic membrane, membrane by opening chloride channels, which is negatively charged.